Anytime you write an extended argument, it's important to keep in mind that you are joining a conversation. That's because no ideas exist purely in a vacuum. There's no topic that hasn't been discussed already in some form, and you're never going to be the first or the last to write about anything. Keeping this idea in mind will help you write arguments that are appropriate, fair, and interesting. But before we get too far into the lesson, let's go ahead and pause for a quick reflection. Reflect on the question you are given, making sure that you write informally and off the top of your head. So whenever you sit down to write an extended argument, the first thing you'll probably do is brainstorm ideas. And in that process, in that brainstorming process, it's important that you always do these three things. Consider the multiple positions and perspectives on that topic. Consider different angles to examine the topic from. And always consider the most appropriate ways of responding to the topic. Some topics can be boiled down into just two opposing sides. A side that defends the particular topic and a side that challenges it. For instance, in the issue of felon voting rights, we could break this down into a, a defend proposition and a challenge proposition. Uh, defend would be ex-felons ex should have the right to vote, and a challenge proposition would be that ex-felons should not have the right to vote. Similarly, we could look at the issue of public shaming in this way. The defend proposition would be that public shaming ought to be used to deter crime. The challenge position would be that public shaming ought not to be used to deter crime. But when considering the different sides of an issue, keep in mind you don't always have to take one side completely. You can defend, challenge, or qualify that issue. Qualification in this case means to add conditions or limitations to a defending or challenging position, such as ex-felons should have the right to vote, but only when X, or public shaming ought to be used to deter crime, but only when Y, or only in Y circumstances, or only in Y ways, that sort of thing. Okay, time for a couple of quick writing exercises. For each of the topics that you are given, identify the different sides to that issue, and then brainstorm two, to three, uh, two or three different qualifying positions that you could take. All right, our first topic here was the privatization of space exploration. This does kind of have two clear sides, being in favor of uh, privatizing space exploration or against it. Uh, so uh, some of the various positions you could take is that uh, space exploration ought to be privatized or space exploration ought not to be privatized and just be run through government programs, that sort of thing. You could also qualify this a number of different ways. Um, uh, elements, uh, certain elements of space exploration should be privatized while others should not, that sort of thing. Uh, you could take the position that um, civilian space exploration should be open to privatization, whereas military should be uh, still um, led by the government, something like that. Um, and even then, there's a lot of different positions you could take. This doesn't necessarily have to be a should or should not type of, of, uh, of claim here, of position. You could just talk about uh, how um, the privatization of space exploration uh, is uh, economically beneficial to, uh, to a, a society, to a nation, something like that. Or you could say the privatization of space exploration um, is, uh, is, I don't know, ethically wrong or something like that. Um, there's all kinds of different positions that you could take within that that aren't just this should or should not be happen, or should, should happen rather. 
Our second topic is the annual Buy Nothing Day. There's a lot of different uh, ways we could approach this. It does kind of have, again, two sides uh, for an annual Buy Nothing Day or against it. Uh, you know, an annual Buy Nothing Day is something that should be established or it should not be established. Uh, you could qualify this as well. Uh, an annual Buy Nothing Day should be established, but only uh, for boycotting um, like large corporations and not small businesses, something like that. Uh, and again, we could take other positions that aren't just should or should not. Uh, you could talk about how an annual Buy Nothing Day is um, economically harmful to uh, you know, uh, struggling small businesses or something like that. Or you could say an annual Buy Nothing Day is environmentally necessary uh, because a lot of the uh, environmental problems we're facing right now have to do with excessive consumer culture. So there's a lot of different ways that we could look at this and it all starts by looking at those two sides. In addition to considering the different positions or sides within an, a debatable issue, you should also consider the different angles of examination that you could explore the topic from. Yeah, the angles of examination are all the different areas of life that that topic could apply to, uh, how it could apply to politics or economics or society, culture, religion, ethics, etc. For instance, if we were trying to examine the issue of felon voting rights, there's a number of different angles of examination we could explore. We could look at this from a societal point of view and ask, what are the societal benefits and harms of felons being allowed to vote? We could look at it from the individual point of view. Uh, what are the harms and benefits to the individual felon of uh, denying or allowing them the right to vote? Uh, we could look at it from a political point of view. How does felon voting impact politics and government? We could look at it from a philosophical point of view. How does felon voting sort of reconcile with our philosophies of voting and democracy in this country? How does it reconcile with our stated philosophies behind incarceration and what, the per what we say the purpose of incarceration is? We could look at it from an ethical point of view. What are the ethical concerns behind allowing felons to vote? Or, for instance, the issue of public shaming. There's a number of different uh, angles of examination we could look at for that. Again, starting with the societal and the individual. Uh, societal, what are the societal benefits and harms of public shaming versus the individual? What are the harms and benefits to the individual? We could look at the, the practicality of this, just how practical or unpractical is it to uh, incorporate a system for public shaming as punishment for crime. We could look at the uh, economic uh, angle. What are the financial costs or, or benefits here? We could, again, look at it from an ethical point of view. What are the ethical concerns behind public shaming? Let's now complete another short writing exercise to practice what we're learning. For each of the same two topics, identify at least four different angles of examination that you could explore the topic with, and just briefly explain what examining that angle of examination uh, would look like. All right, starting with the privatization of space exploration, uh, you could first of all look at this from an economic point of view. Uh, what are the, uh, the uh, financial costs and benefits to a, a nation to, uh, to privatize its space program? Uh, you know, considering that if a government leads a space, a space program, that means that it's being paid for by tax dollars as opposed to a privatized space program uh, is funded by, by corporations, that sort of thing. So that has, um, economic implications. That also carries with it environmental implications as well, uh, because we know that uh, when corporations are left unregulated to, uh, to pursue a goal or, or to, um, uh, to uh, make strides in a particular field, they aren't necessarily concerned with preserving the environment because they're concerned with preserving their bottom line first. Uh, and so there's certain uh, environmental problems that could arise if uh, we take the space exploration out of the hands of government. 
Uh, there's a number of other things we could look at here. Uh, the political implications of this, the, the societal implications as well. Uh, when it's no longer this government program, uh, then it's no longer something that society as a whole backs, uh, backs, but instead a private entity, a corporation backs. And so there's cultural concerns there as well. Uh, can you picture like, um, you know, no, no longer these, uh, well, we have to picture it now because we're seeing this with, with uh, SpaceX, right? Uh, we, we, you know, astronauts, NASA astronauts used to be kind of heroes in this country. Uh, and what's that going to look like next? Uh, it's uh, no longer uh, kind of an uh, emblematic of the United States. Astronauts are going to be emblematic of the values of whatever corporation uh, creates them and sends them into space. And so a lot of different angles of examination there that you could choose from. As for the establishment of an annual Buy Nothing Day, you definitely have to look at the economic and financial impacts uh, because uh, doing the, you know, the establishment of this uh, would have significant impacts on businesses, uh, both large and small. Uh, you could also look at uh, kind of the, uh, the cultural impact on this as well because it is designed to kind of give us uh, what they say they're a 24-hour consumer detox and uh, what would be the benefits and harms on our culture. Uh, you look at at, uh, uh, you can look at societal versus individual as well, as well, the benefits and harms on the whole society versus on the individual. Uh, you can talk about the ethics of this as well. This also has environmental concerns because remember a lot of the um, uh, a lot of the environmental problems we have are driven by consumerism. So there's lots of different angles of examination to be considered for uh, something like a buy nothing day. Finally, it's important that you also understand which positions are actually appropriate to the discussion. See, it's not enough for your position, the position you take, to merely be on topic. No, the position you take must further the actual topic that's being discussed uh, in, the, in a meaningful way and in a way that have been set by the parameters of the discussion. To help you better understand what is and is not an appropriate position to take within a topic, uh, it might be helpful to consider the three different types of claims or three different types of arguments you can make with those claims. Uh, we can make claims and arguments about the past, which is claiming or arguing that something was or was not. Uh, we can make claims or arguments about the present, which is claiming or arguing that something is or is not or claims and arguments about the potential future, claiming or arguing that something should or should not be. Let's take a moment to talk about how we actually argue each of those three different types of claims. So how do we support a claim about the past? Well, there's really only one way to do it. We have to use evidence about the past as well. That's it. There's no way we can support an evidence, uh, or excuse me, a claim about the past with anything else but evidence from the past. For instance, if I made this claim about the past, saying that public shaming was used in, New Eng uh, in colonial New England as punishments for crimes, uh, the evidence I use has to be from the past as well. I could say that magistrates in Massachusetts Bay Colony would often sentence people to stand on a pillory and be public sh publicly shamed for their crimes. And I could also go on to say that the Puritans also punished criminals by making them wear signs or symbols of their crimes on their clothing. Yeah, we learned that from reading the Scarlet Letter. But the point here is that since I've made a claim about the past, I can only support it with evidence about things that happened in the past. What about the present? How do we support a claim about the present? Well, for that, we can use evidence from the present, but also we can rely on evidence from the past as well. For instance, if I made this claim that public shaming does not foster corrective behavior, I could support it with a general statement about the present as well, that feelings of shame cause the individual to become defensive and not reflective. I could also use evidence from the past to support it, saying that historically, cultures that have used public shaming as punishments have since abandoned them for their ineffectiveness. Finally, how do we support a claim about the potential future? Well, we support it with evidence from the potential future. I know that sounds kind of weird, but don't mistake this for evidence from the future. We can't have evidence from the future, but we can give evidence about the potential future, uh, keeping in mind that everything we say about what could potentially happen in the future is based on our observations about the present and the past. 
And here's what I mean about that. Let's say I made the claim that public shaming should not be used as a punishment for crime. Well, my primary uh, premise supporting that statement would be something like shaming will not achieve the goal of rehabilitating criminals. So that's an example of using evidence from the potential future to support a claim about the potential future. I'd also want to support that statement, though, um, with, uh, with statements from the present and the past. So if I said that shaming will not achieve the goal of rehabilitating facilitating criminals, evidence for that could be that feelings of shame do not provoke self-reflection or desire to change. And I could support that with, according to recent research has shown this and this and this, which research is just observations from the past. So making claims about the potential future is very interesting because you have to support them with uh, premises about the potential future, but those premises have to be supported by premises and examples uh, from the present and the past. One quick note about claims and arguments about the past, uh, they tend to serve pretty limited purposes. Yeah, we really only make arguments about the past when we're studying history or practicing law or criminal justice when you're trying to prove whether or not someone did or did not do something in the past, that sort of thing. Uh, and so uh, clearly your A push uh, essay questions, the LEQ and the DBQ, they're gonna require arguments about the past. However, AP Lang, since it has a more open-ended, uh, it doesn't really have a focus on a particular topic, the uh, synthesis and argument uh, essays, they're going to require arguments about either the present or the potential future. You really just don't know what you're going to get. Additionally, uh, in addition to uh, thinking about uh, whether a, uh, a claim about the past, present, or future is most appropriate, you should also consider any limitations that the topic has uh, established. Um, that's because some topics are wide open and give you many different ways you could respond to them. Other topics, however, are going to be more focused on very specific angles of examination. For instance, this particular topic, whether or not ex-felons should be allowed to vote, the parameters of the discussion are wide open. Yeah, you, you do have to argue about the potential future because it's saying whether or not something should. However, you could examine that, uh, or you could argue that, that uh, potential future based on social impacts, psychological impacts, ethical implications, and so on. There's a lot of different ways that you could uh, examine this particular topic. This other topic, on the other hand, whether or not denying felons the right to vote is democratic, well, the parameters of this kind of discussion are going to be more narrow, right? Um, yeah, it does tell you that this needs to be, uh, your claim needs to be about the present uh, because it's not about a potential future or the past here. But your argument needs to focus specifically on the nature of democracy, uh, its values, its goals, and apply that to whether or not uh, it, it meshes with uh, denying felons the right to vote. Let's complete one final short writing exercise. Uh, the topics that you've been dealing with, this time I've given them actual essay prompts. And from those prompts, I want you to explain the different types of positions you could take uh, based on the language of the prompt and any kind of uh, limitations that you see there. All right, so our first topic about privatizing space exploration, our prompt reads, write an essay that argues your position on the benefits of space exploration. All right, so this particular prompt is kind of wide open. Um, we probably want to do a, a position uh, in a primary claim in the present, uh, in the present tense, because it's not asking uh, whether or not something should be done. Um, and so we want to just talk about, in general, in the present, the benefits of space exploration. And benefits is a real uh, vague term, isn't it? So we can argue this from a lot of different angles. We can look at economic benefits, environmental uh, economic benefits benefits and harms, environmental benefits and harms, ethical benefits and harms, societal benefits and harms. So you could go all over the place with this one. That's a, a nice wide open position. Again, as long as we write about the, uh, the pre argue from the, uh, the present.
All right, the next one, our buy nothing day prompt, says write an essay that argues your position on whether or not an annual buy nothing day should be established in your community. Okay, so this is uh, one that we need to argue from the uh, about the potential future because it's asking should this or should this not be established. And this is a little bit more narrow, but still kind of open-ended. Um, it's talking about being established in our community. Uh, and so uh, we have to kind of consider the needs of our of our particular community here um, and that that's it though we could still argue this from a lot of different uh, potential angles uh, as long as they pertain particularly to our community um, uh, in particular